If we use an if statement by itself, that's a rather limited way to control the flow of our program because oftentimes we want the program to do one thing if the condition is true, but we want it to do something else if the condition is not true. And the else clause is what allows us to do that. Sometimes we might want to check more than a single condition. We might want to check several conditions and do different things depending on which one of those conditions is true. In that case, there's a clause called elif, which we'll see how to use to check additional conditions. One thing, if you're used to programming other languages, one of the sort of disappointing things about Python is it doesn't have the equivalent of what's called switch case, where you uh, have a condition under which you would switch to different branches depending on the case. There is no sort of structure like that. You have to sort of create it yourself with uh, if, else, and elif. Let's see what happens if we improve our first code by putting in an else. So we have the same thing as before. We set the value of is Friday equal to false. If it evaluates as true, it prints TGIF. If it does not evaluate as true, which will be the case here, and it'll say too bad, have a nice day anyway. Let's try that. Yep, that's what it did. Now let's change it to true. And now when we run it, it says TGIF. So we can use if and else to improve our code before. So before we ask, um, if the character that the person typed in was Mickey Mouse, and if it was Mickey Mouse, it uh, did something, but if it wasn't Mickey Mouse, it performed the non-indented print statement, but it didn't have any specific action if the condition was false. So in this case, if the, if the name that the person types in is equal to Mickey Mouse, then this will evaluate as true, and it'll do the indented code block here, say you are a Disney character, and then also you are almost ready to go out of copyright. However, if what the person types in is not equal to Mickey Mouse, this will evaluate as false, and it will carry out the statement in the code block that follows else. In this case, the code block is just a single line, but we could have it be more than one line if we wanted to. Then regardless of whether it executes the first code block or the second code block, it is always going to execute this last line because the indentation level of that line is brought back out to be lined up with the if and the else clauses. So let's try this out. Name of the character. All right, Fred Flintstone, you are not a Disney character. Let's try it again. Mickey Mouse, you are a Disney character. You're almost ready to go out of copyright. Let's try another Disney character. Pluto, okay, once again, it says you are not a Disney character. That's because we, in this situation, we really only have one check that we can carry out. It's either Mickey Mouse or it's not. So we could improve this code uh, by using elif. So when we use elif, we can check for additional conditions besides the one on if. So in the first if statement, we check whether what the person typed in was equal to Mickey Mouse. Elif is basically short for else if. So you could actually carry this out by nesting another if statement inside an else statement, but that, would, that gets pretty messy. So basically, if the first condition is not true, then it'll perform a check on the first elif and, and see whether the name they typed in was Donald Duck or not. If that's not true, then it'll check the next elif and see whether what they typed in was Minnie Mouse. And then if it fails to pass any of these three tests, then otherwise it will carry out the code block that follows the else clause. So let's go ahead and try this. All right, Minnie Mouse, you are a Disney character. Your boyfriend is getting old. That's great. That was what it was supposed to do. Now let's try Donald Duck. OK, 
Okay, you are not a mouse, that's true. Okay, let's go ahead and try one more time. Well, you are not a Disney character. Okay, that's good. Pluto, you are not a Disney character. Okay, so the problem here is that we are really only checking for three Disney characters. What we really need to have is a very, very long list of a lot of Disney characters that we could check through. And um, we can see how to do this when we learn how to read files in from your hard drive or from the internet. But for right now, we probably don't wanna to try to type into our program every single possible Disney character. So we're kind of stuck for right now. So to summarize, two important things that we should get out of the if-then-else statements. One is that indentation is really important for controlling whether code blocks are executed only under certain conditions or whether they're executed all the time. The code that we've seen so far is not very complicated, but if you do something like put a loop inside of a, an if statement or an if statement inside of a loop or a loop inside of a loop inside of an if statement inside of an if statement, then it starts becoming very difficult to keep track of what indentation levels are appropriate for different parts of the uh, defining different blocks of code. If your code gets that complicated, then you probably need to be defining functions to avoid having too many complicated indentation levels. The other thing that we always have to keep in mind is that the program very literally does exactly what we say. Sometimes we run into complicated logic systems and it seems like we have told the program what it should do, but for some reason it's not. And in that case, we just have to literally go through and find out, is it doing exactly what we said? And we see this in sort of a simple way in when we type in a Disney character that is not one of the ones that we checked for. Um, it may seem like our program is making a mistake because it says that the character is not a Disney character, but again, it's simply doing exactly the comparisons that we say, and it's not smart enough to do anything else.